inspiration from the Lord and the call that came upon my life and the small team that I was with. And we were excited. First of all, he, sh he showed us how rotten and filthy and hypocritical our, our faith was. Although we were seeing miracles, signs and wonders and people coming to the kingdom, yet he showed us that many will come and say, we cast out demons, we worked miracles, we prophesied, and say, get out of my side. And it's written, without holiness, no one will see God. It says, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will enter heaven except he who does the will of the Father. And he called us to examine our hearts and see truth, what truth was, and repent and give our lives to him. And he said, you can never purify yourself enough. You can never make yourself holy enough. You can never be righteous enough in my sight. The only thing you can do, give me your lives. Then I will make your lives what I require them to be. Anyway, when he gave the call to us, I want you to go to the nations and blow the trumpet. Go to the nations and warn my people. My church has turned away from me. My church has found pools and ponds of water and they have left the, the fountain of living water. Can go to the nations and call my people back to me. It was exciting just to know, you mean God has called us as the man we read in the Bible. He's given us something to go and do in the nations of the world. He's promising to open up the nations and take us. It was exciting or just scary at the same time. Then we began to ask ourselves, but what is it we are going to tell the people in the nations? That repent? Jesus is coming soon? Turn back from your sins? They will say, we are, we are believers. We believe in Jesus. So what is new? What is this we are going to say to the Lord? Lord, suddenly we realize we don't know how to speak the word he had given us. We don't know how to make it sound genuine and original. Two thousand years people have been saying, repent. The Lord is coming soon. We didn't know how to do this work. And yet, the things we are going out to see, to speak to the church in the nations, repent because this, the church is this, the church is hypocritical, the church is this. We were seeing in our own lives. We were still like that. In spite of the knowledge that he has come, had come to us and spoken all these things, we were still like that. So we went to the Lord and said, Lord, how are we going to do the work? Our expectation was, I'll give you this sign and these miracles. When you go and you work these miracles, and the people will know, oh my, that must be God. Let us listen. That's what we wanted. Some special miracles, some special anointing, power that will prove he has chosen us. And he said to us, you cannot do my work. There's no way you can do my work. Only I can fulfill what I want to do. What you need to do is to lay down your life. And then that's when he began to give us what we came later to refer to as the three foundational principles. That we must, we must come to the place of laying down our lives to him and knowing we are not our own. He is our Lord. We are fully given over to him. We have no right over our lives. We have no say where we go, where we, what we do. Where we have no say. He is the Lord. Two, he said to us, you must accept that I did not call you and choose you because you are perfect. You are not, you did not merit it, but I chose you. And if you can believe that, then believe it for those around you, the people I bring around you. I will choose them, not because you see them as worthy, not because you approve of them, but because you see nothing wrong with them. So you must love them unconditionally. And loving them is worship to me is honor to me. You, you are honoring me that I know what I'm doing by working with them, even if you see so much unfinished work in their lives. Love them. And even when I send you to go out to the people, don't judge my people. Even if you see them doing the grossest errors. Because if, if it wasn't for that, then I wouldn't call you. I've called you, and I'm saying it to my people because of those things. So when you see them, don't pass judgment. Don't condemn. Don't despise, even in your heart. Don't look down on them. Don't write them off. Don't think you're better because you're not like that. Otherwise, I wouldn't send you. I'm sending you because such things exist. So when you see them, humble yourself and cry. Turn to me and cry out. Join my heart, which is aching for them. But the moment you start despising them, you lose the authority to do anything about them. And three said, now you know that I've called you for my 
time you should not work, which you don't know fully, you've got to lay down your life for it. You've got to be willing to die for it or to live for it. You've got to be doing to, you're willing to do anything for it. Those were three very important principles. And it was like, this is the foundation. Once you position on that foundation, I'll do the rest. I'll do my work. You don't have to worry how the work will be done. You give me your life. Love your neighbor unconditionally and give your life to my work. The rest I'll do.